Every 28 seconds, somebody buys a Liverpool kit. That makes over a million units a year. With the club's recent success, demand has almost doubled since last season and the home kit is now the most popular in the UK. Supplying the Liverpool kit is a big deal. And so it was big news when the club recently announced sportswear giant Nike as the new kit supplier starting in June 2020. In this video, we want to look into the details of the deal, how Nike outmaneuvered New Balance and what LeBron James, Serena Williams and Drake have to do with it. Especially since its acquisition by the Fenway Sports Group and the arrival of manager Jürgen Klopp, the development of Liverpool has been quite impressive. Both present and future look bright, with a 2019 Champions League win as the recent highlight. This makes the club a valuable asset for brands and many sponsors seek to work together with Liverpool to sell their products and be associated with the club's success. So, when their kit sponsorship deal with New Balance was up for negotiation, it was no surprise that many brands bid to become the new kit supplier. New Balance was delivering the Liverpool merchandising since 2013 and saw a continuous growth of sales driven by two consecutive Champions League finals. The company was eager to extend the seven-year relationship and ready to pay £45 million per year. Besides New Balance, the Liverpool executives talked to the three big players, Adidas, Puma and Nike. Since Adidas had quit their sponsorship agreement with Liverpool seven years earlier, calling the club overpriced, they were not considered a credible option. Puma had just signed Manchester City for reported 58 million euros and therefore didn't have the budget for a competitive offer. So the decision was to be made between the current sponsor New Balance and the market leader Nike. Compared to the 45 million pounds from New Balance, Nike offered significantly less guaranteed base compensation of 30 million pounds. But they also offered more marketing and sales efforts and to pay 20% royalties of all net sales of Liverpool merchandising. The total compensation paid by Nike could potentially rise to approximately 70 million pounds per year, which explains the appeal of the Nike offer. At this point, it is essential to emphasize that New Balance had a vast advantage to continue its relationship with Liverpool because of a clause in their contract called Matching Right. The Matching Right is standard in the industry and enables the current sponsor to match any competitor's offer and continue the contract with a respective club. So no matter what Nike offered, New Balance could always match the offer and be sure that they keep Liverpool. That being said, it seemed almost impossible for Nike to sign Liverpool. Considering the value of the club and its recent Champions League title, it was unlikely that New Balance would not match any offer from Nike. And that is precisely what happened. When presented the numbers from Nike, the New Balance executives immediately chose to match the offer. Liverpool, on the other hand, insisted on signing with Nike and argued that New Balance was not able to match all the terms of Nike's offer. And so the case went to court. On behalf of Liverpool acted counsel Guy Maupas, who is well known in the sports industry for being the leading counsel investigating the Lance Armstrong doping affair. He argued that Nike offered Liverpool to use three non-football global superstars of the caliber of LeBron James, Serena Williams and Drake for marketing activities to promote the club. And that New Balance cannot match that in good faith, because they do not have global superstars of that caliber in their portfolio. New Balance argued that the caliber of individual athletes was too vague to be a material, measurable and matchable term. New Balance's counsel had told the court one could say you must spend a million pounds on marketing and then it could be measured straight away, but one has not got that here. But surprisingly, the judge disagreed. He said in his statement that LeBron James is the world's most famous basketball player, that Serena Williams, having dominated women's tennis for 20 years, is one of the most famous athletes in the world and that Drake was the world's top-selling recording artist in 2016 and 2018. It would be unrealistic that their caliber cannot be measured. 
The judge ruled that the New Balance offer on marketing was less favorable to Liverpool than the Nike offer. Against all odds, Nike won the case and with it the sponsoring rights for one of the most popular sport clubs in the world. Not because of money or bonuses, but because of their iconic portfolio of athletes. In a way, it is not surprising that the court found that certain types of stars attract immeasurable value. It appears that brands will be forced to seek out superstar endorsees to match rights in sponsorship deals in the future. Although in this case there was no cause for the court to say how influencer value should be measured, we can assume that clauses that do not specify precise metrics will be open to challenge in the future. So the question that remains is how to measure the caliber of an influencer. Social media followers, the maximum added value or expected revenue growth for a company are some vague ideas, but it is not really apparent until now and might also depend on the case. One thing is for sure, this judgment will no doubt boost the influencer's stock. The value of athletes and other brand ambassadors will further grow as an outstanding portfolio can now even secure a unique advantage in negotiations.